PLC Programming Conveyor Hazard Control Example. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at the application of discrete inputs and outputs, internal bits, and the time delay on energization timer, as well as two additional timers that will be utilized to create an interval timing setup. This circuit has been designed so that when an operator presses the start push button, the horn will sound off in bursts of sound for 10 seconds. The conveyor motor will then start automatically after this 10 second time. Now the horn will go in bursts of one second on, one second off. And this is a fairly common application where an operator will want to start a large conveyor system for a gravel type of operation or something where it's very, very large. And we want to ensure that everyone in the vicinity is aware that the conveyor will start very soon. This allows for anyone to get out of the conveyor system if they are working on it in any way, shape or form, and to ensure that no one is leaning or uh, sitting on the conveyor when it starts. Now the time delay on energization relay that we will be utilizing is an Allen Bradley function that has two separate coils on the output side of the timer symbol. When the timer is energized, the EN or energized or enabled internal bit will go true. When timing is complete, the DN or done internal bit will go true. When the input rung is true, the timer will be energized. And as soon as it's energized, it will start to time. At the bottom, we have a large section of the PLC program whose sole purpose is to provide an interval timing set setup where the horn will be off for one second, on for one second, off for one second, on for one second. And that will be through the flip-flopping use of two separate time delay on energization timers. In order to fully understand the system, we need to look at all of the correlations. The correlations are determining what controls what within the program. We're always looking at addresses and ensuring that the address is exactly the same as something else within the circuit. For instance, on the warning M1 delay timer, the enable coil or EN is controlling three separate internal bits at various locations within the PLC program. When the EN coil goes on, all of these inputs will go true. The done coil is going to be controlling two separate internal bits. One is an examine if off, located down here. The other is an examine if on, located up here. When the done coil is not on, so not on, this should be true and this will be false. When the done coil is true, or on rather, this should go false and this will go true. On the blast on timer, it is again a time delay on energization. The enable coil will control this one internal bit, which is examine if on, and the done coil will control this internal bit, again, an examine if on. Finally, the done coil on the blast off time delay on energization relay is controlling this examine if off internal bit. So a significant portion of this program is done with internal bits. The items that are connected to the PLC are a starter, the motor conveyor motor itself, the stop push button, start push button, and a horn strobe. Let's see what happens when we first turn on the system. We have a stop push button, which is connected to input one, which is an examine if on input instruction. This would mean that the start or the rather stop push button has this input one true. We then also have two separate internal bits that are examine if off. Both of these internal bits being that they're examine if off mean that if the item that controls them is off, they will be true. Well, let's go ahead and press the start push button, and we're going to see a number of things take place. As soon as we do this, input two goes true, and my timer, M1 warning, will start to time. 
Now watch the enable coil on the right hand side will immediately go on. And it's going to start timing for 10 seconds. At the exact same time, all of the internal bits that the enable coil controls will go true. This includes a holding path for my start push button, which means I can now release my finger from the start push button and the timing sequence is started. So what happens next? Well, if we look at the fourth rung, we can see a complete line of true input instructions, meaning that the blast on timer should start timing. Now it's a very short timer of only one second. And we'll notice that this, the enable, will energize immediately. And it will then complete its time after one second and the done coil will then go on. Now, as soon as the done coil goes on, it will change the state of its two internal bits that it controls. They will both go true. But how long will they go true for? That's really dependent on how long the blast off timer is set for. Now the blast off is set for one second. And so again, it has an enable coil, but once we've completed the timing, the done coil will go energized on and that will cause a shift in the internal bits that are controlled by this timer. If we look at this one, done blast off, blast off timer right here, this one is gonna go false. As soon as that happens, Watch what occurs in this rung. Obviously, all of this is going to have to go back to its original state. This can no longer be energized. And what that will do is cause the enable and done coils to go off. And also over here, this to go back to a false condition. Well, now we can take a look at what's going to take place as we continue the timing. As soon as this goes off, both these coils, this internal bit should go back to true. And we can see that the process continues repeating itself for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, this timer up here will time out. And when that occurs, the done coil on this timer will go on and that will cause this internal bit to go false and this internal bit to go true, thereby starting the motor coil. Now, having this false means that now the horn strobe cannot turn on again because there is now going to be a permanent, well, semi-permanent false logic statement here that is preventing the blast on timer from turning on due to the timer on the very top rung.